But in today's video, what we're going to be looking at is why 0 factorial is equal to 1. Now, the first thing we need to know is what is a factorial? Now, 2 factorial is going to be 2 times 1, which is just 2. Now, you might be able to see the pattern here. I think that's a pretty cool proof. everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Now for today's video I'm going to be teaching you a little bit of maths. In this video we are going to be having a look at why 0 factorial is equal to 1. I thought it would be a quite a fun idea. See this though we're not in schools at the minute and it's coming to summer holidays so if you might still want to be doing a little bit of maths. I don't know. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. Before we jump into this video, if you don't already, please make sure to go and follow me over on my Instagram because I post on there, you can keep updated and you can follow me on Twitter and TikTok if you want to as well. Now let's jump in to the video. Now the first thing we need to know is what is a factorial? So uh, let's find out. If we Google what is a factorial, you get this definition and it says a factorial is the product of an integer and all the integers below it. For example, factorial 4, which is represented by 4 exclamation mark, is equal to 24. So what that means is 4, that's an eraser, that's a pen, 4 factorial is equal to, well, all the integers and that integer multiplied together. So 4 and then all the integers below it, 3 times 2 times 1, but not 0 or any negatives. So what that means is we're doing 4 times 3, which is 12, times 2, which is 24, times 1 is 24. So 4 factorial is equal to 24. And we can see it says that there. But in today's video, what we're going to be looking at is why 0 factorial is equal to 1. Because if we have a look at that definition, what it says is that a factorial is the product of an integer and all the integers below it. Well, all the integers below 0, well, let's write them down. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and that carries on to negative infinity. There isn't an end. So why is 0 factorial equal to 1? Well, I'm going to have a look at a pattern of all the other factorials. So we're going to start with 0 factorial. We know that that is equal to 1, but I'm not going to write that yet because we're going to presume that we don't know that because we're going to do a sort of informal proof. 0 factorial. Then let's have a look at 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and 5 factorial. Now let's work out some of those. So we know that factorial is the product of that integer and all the integers below it. So 1 factorial is just going to be 1. So we can put a 1 in there. Now 2 factorial is going to be 2 times 1, which is just 2. 3 factorial is just going to be 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. 4 factorial, we knew from the example, is 24, but that's because it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial gets a little bit complicated here because we've got lots of multiplications. So it's going to be 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 20 times 6 times 1. So that's just 120. So 5 factorial is 120. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to see how we can go from 5 factorial to 4 factorial, etc, etc. Now we can see to go from 5 factorial to 4 factorial, we're going to divide by 5 because 120 divided by 5 is 24. So what I can do is add a little arrow and say divide by 5. Now I'm going to have a look and see how we can go from 4 factorial to 3 factorial. And to do that, we're going to divide by 4 because 24 divided by 4 is 6. I can see a hair. Is it still there? Okay, it's gone. 
So what I can do is I can put an arrow and say divide by four. Now let's have a look at how we can go from three factorial to two factorial. Well, six divided by something gives us two. That something is three. So I'm going to divide by three. Now you might be able to see the pattern here. To go from two factorial to one factorial, we're gonna divide by two. Now what I want you to look at is the numbers that we're dividing by. Each time they're decreasing by one. So to go from one factorial to zero factorial, we're gonna divide by one. Because to go from two factorial to one factorial, we divided by two, so one less. This time, we're gonna divide by one. So one divided by one gives us one. So therefore, we can see that zero factorial is equal to one. And that's a little proof. Just by looking at patterns of numbers and what happens, we can prove something that doesn't follow the definition of what factorial is. I think that's a pretty cool proof. Hopefully you've learned something in this video. If you haven't, then I apologize. Maybe you already knew it all. But if you have, and you didn't know anything about factorials, now you know what a factorial is you know how to find a factorial, and you know what zero factorial is and how to prove it. I really, really do hope that you enjoyed this video. It was just a little idea that I had. I knew the proof, I've seen it online a few times, so I wanted to share it with you just in case you hadn't seen it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Make sure you give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed, and subscribe because it's free and it puts a smile on my face. And while you're subscribing, make sure to go and follow me over on Instagram to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and I will see you on Wednesday with a brand new video. Bye! Is it still there? Okay, it's gone.